Hello, welcome back to the channel. Now, first off, many apologies for how long it's been since I did my last upload. Uh, I've just did, had some personal issues I've had to deal with and I've uh, I've actually been offline, totally offline. I haven't been on anything for about a month. <laughs> so uh, anyway, that's all been dealt with now. Uh, thanks for sticking by and uh, being patient. Uh, hopefully we'll get back into the swing of things now. So with that being said, on with today's video. Now, whenever anybody asks me what's the best starting place in astronomy, in a heartbeat, I will always say, learn your constellations. Now, I don't mean learn every single constellation in the entire night sky. I mean, there are 88 constellations in total, uh, but there's no need to learn 88 because you'll not be able to see all 88 uh, because of course depending on which uh, part of the world you live whether it's the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere for instance you know there's certain constellations that you can see in the northern hemisphere that you can't see in the southern hemisphere and vice versa but of course you can you can halve that number uh, like I say so um, unless of course you travel around the world and you do travel often from the northern hemisphere to the southern hemisphere or whatever then by all means by all means learn them all now for all of you that have got go-to telescopes let's say and you say well I don't need to learn the constellations my telescope does all that for me well I'll, I would really encourage you to start learning them fast because Go-to telescopes, it's not always convenient to use a go-to telescope, you know, for instance, on holiday, on business trips or whatever. And uh, unless, you, you know, if you don't know that your way around the night sky, you know, you're pretty much uh, stuffed, really. Um, or maybe the battery runs out, the battery bank runs out on your go-to telescope, or it even breaks down. I mean, go-to telescopes do break down occasionally. And if the telescope gets lost, what chance have you got if you've never learned your way around the night sky? Now, don't worry, learning the constellations is incredibly rewarding and useful. Um, there's nothing better, nothing feels better than when you can just go out on a beautiful clear night, look up, and instead of seeing little point, pinpoints of light in the sky, you're actually making sense of those pinpoints of light. And uh, once you start mapping your way around, you're going to feel a lot more confident in the hobby. And like I say, it's going to serve you, it's a skill that's going to serve you throughout your entirety. Um, of doing astronomy uh, you know that's the first thing I do when I go out on a clear night is I look up I look at a constellation whatever the time of year that may be and I, I can get my bearings and I know where I am now of course not just for getting your bearings but the constellations are the signposts they're the cosmic signposts of the sky um, it's the constellations that are going to show you and point you on to bigger and better things so it really is in your favor to uh, start learning the constellations now constellations are seasonal this means that, that you we get winter constellations that uh, we get summer constellations and the ones and the constellations that get in your in the winter you'll not get in the summer and, and, and uh, you, it, like a cycle throughout the seasons but there are a special few constellations and targets but I just want to talk about the constellations today um, that are available all year round uh, so you can see why these are a good place to start learning the constellations because if it's clear tonight they're going to be there tonight these uh, these constellations for you to find now these constellations that are available all year round are what's called the circumpolars now the clue is in the title um, what this simply means is it's anything that's close enough to polaris the pole star uh, that they don't when they actually when the earth is turning and the stars appear to uh, rotate around the sky of course it's us turning not the stars moving all the stars will turn around polaris and if they don't dip below the horizon throughout the entire year that means they're circumpolar this is one of the reasons why um, if you just say to the average person who oh, don't particularly is not you know don't have to be into astronomy and say name a constellation they're more than likely going to say ursa major aka the great bear the saucepan the plow the big dipper there's many many names for uh, ursa major and this is purely because it's a nice big easy recognizable target that's available all year round well in the northern hemisphere that is 
Um, and I've always said it would be so strange to actually go to the Southern Hemisphere and, um, and, and not actually see uh, some Asia in the sky. It would look, I'd it'd feel like I would literally on a different planet. So uh, yeah, this is one of the reasons why Ursa Major is one of the most popular um, constellations there is. Now, just in case you don't know where the pole star is, we can use Ursa Major, like I said uh, at the start of the video, about using constellations to find other things. Well, Ursa Major is a perfect constellation for finding Polaris, the pole star. Now, you simply use the two pointers, uh, what's called the two pointer stars, is the end two stars of Ursa Major, the uh, front of the pan, if you like, if you see it as a saucepan. Now, if you draw an imaginary line be, uh, up through those two stars and keep going until you come to the next brightest star that you come to, that is um, Polaris, the pole star. So you can see there's the, already we're using the constellations to find other things. Now, there's five more constellations I want to show you tonight. Uh, so let's just take a quick look of uh, how to find uh, these five more circumpolar constellations. Now, the five constellations I want to uh, bring to your attention here are, first of all, you, you face north and identify Ursa Major. Now, once you've identified Ursa Major, identify the pole star Polaris. Now, if you take, um, if you, if you take the distance from Polaris to the horizon, and then if you imagine you've got a, a huge um, sky compass and draw an imaginary uh, circle, of uh, in the sky from Polaris from the horizon line now you know the area um, once you're facing north of the area or the particular part of the sky where all these constellations are going to be lie they're not going to be outside of that circle now the six circumpolar constellations are well the first one we already know Ursa Major then we have Draco moving on we have Cepheus Cepheus sorry then Cassiopeia, and then finally the one I've been uh, dreading to pronounce, Camelopodalius. <laughs> now, why they didn't call that one the giraffe, um, I don't know. Let's just keep it English, yeah? A lot easier than uh, Camelopodalus, anyway. And finally, of course, there is Ursa Minor in the middle of it all. Now, the best way to start identifying uh, these other five constellations um, is from start with Ursa Major. And with Draco, if you've noticed, if you, if you take the handle of the pan, these, uh, these four stars here, you can see that uh, part of Draco kind of mirrors the handle of the pan and that's a good way of finding the start of the constellation Draco and then you can see that it follows round and curves round and then goes back down on itself and it's almost like a sloppy kind of capital N. If we keep moving round you'll come to Cepheus. Now you can see that with these imaginary lines on it kind of represents a, uh, a house a child would draw and that's the sort of image you want to look for. I always look for that. I notice the square first um, and then you can work out the triangle afterwards. Moving up from Cepheus we've got one of my favorite constellations of all Cassiopeia. Now, Cassiopeia is very easy to identify with it being like a W or an M, however you want to look at it. It does make a distinctive W uh, shape in the sky. And uh, then moving on. Now, as you can see, the two end stars of Cassiopeia, these two here, kind of point to uh, Camelopodalis. Uh, should we call it the giraffe? Because that's what it's supposed to represent, a giraffe, even though it just looks like a triangle. Um, you can see, and that's the way to identify it. You'll just see this faint triangle of stars uh, that represents the giraffe Camelopodalis. So as you can see, once you've identified Ursa Major and Polaris, the other five constellations are going to be pretty easy once you've done the, your imaginary circle of area to look in the sky. 
So there you go, folks. That's six constellations that you can go out tonight, no matter what time you're watching this video. And if it's clear, those six constellations are going to be in the night sky. Now, before I wrap this video up, I just want to uh, make a point of uh, I do get a lot, a lot, and I do mean a lot of questions in the comment section, and I don't always get round to uh, answering them all. And I know I'm about a month behind uh, comments in the minutes. So I do apologize if, uh, if I haven't uh, got back to you in any way at all. Now, I just want to um, uh, make you aware of the Facebook group. Now, before you go, ah, fast forward, switch off, I don't do Facebook. Well, neither do I really, as my group members will probably tell you. I'm a bit elusive on there. Sorry, guys, I will be try and make a point of being on there a lot more than I sh uh, should be at the minute. But uh, on that group, it is full of really, really uh, a great community of people, a really friendly group of people. Uh, uh, people of all um, levels of astronomy, from beginners to really good experienced um, astronomers that are in the group now. So what I'm saying, what I'm trying to say to you, if you have got a question, it would be in your favour to join the group. That way, that you, instead of just posting your question, when it will get answered, if the, it is a little bit more technical, you can at least include a photograph or even maybe even make a small video or something like that on your problem, and I can guarantee you somebody on there will sort it out. After all, this is all about beginners and helping you uh, new astronomers out. So uh, feel free to go down on the Facebook group. Like I say, it's worth downloading the app just to join uh, uh, the Small Optics Facebook group. Uh, that's, uh, that's all I've got Facebook for. Well, that's it for another video, folks. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget, like, share, subscribe, uh, especially hit that like button because that's the one that really does um, do good things to the channel. It really does help me out, that one, folks. In the meantime, go and learn yourself six new constellations. Take good care of yourselves, and I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.